In front of me is the first ever commercially deployed 4G LTE modem uh, by the first ever network, Telia, here in Sweden and also in Norway. In Sweden we use a uh, 10 megahertz uh, wide frequency band which can de deliver f up to 50 megabits on the downlink. And in Norway they launched with 20 megahertz uh, wide frequency uh, delivering 100 megabits bandwidth. The same modem is used in both countries and it's capable of 100 megabits downlink speed. Uh, what can also be said is that it operates on the 2.6 gigahertz band which is a pretty high frequency to use compared to 3G which works on 2.1 gigahertz or 2100 megahertz. And some of the things one should consider is that the higher the frequency uh, that you use, the more it behaves like radar, because radar is around 3.5 gigahertz um, frequency, and that means that you'll get a lot of bounce. The signal will bounce off the surfaces rather than penetrate through them. So 2.6 is, is, I would say, it's on the border of, of just that. And though it works as as um, as mobile broadband, I would I would I wouldn't take I wouldn't put too much weight in the mobility part, but rather that, that it's, um, it's very good as a portable internet access from our previous experiences with, with the, such a frequency. Now, um, uh, what we're going to test here is a speed test because that's the reason why people are going after this technology is because it can provide you such incredible speeds. And um, what I should also say is that this modem is only single mode, meaning it will only work as with 4G network. It won't work with uh, failover towards a 3G or 2G network, such as this modem would. And now we're going to insert it. We have the USB connector. It has a little sheath here. Flip that open. The software was pretty quick to install. It took a couple of minutes and a reboot. And um, normally, well, I don't know if it's normal, but many people have reported that they've had trouble uh, doing this. But since this is uh, the second batch of modems that came in, it could be well said that probably a lot of people from the first batch had issues. And I should also say it contains a SIM card in here, just like a regular 3G modem. So. I open up the dialer software. It uh, works on uh, trying to get the signal. So it's obtaining that information now, looking for a network. And what I can say in the meantime is that the area we're testing in is one of the four key pockets of coverage in Stockholm. And Stockholm is the, the only city in Sweden which has this. And the area that we're in is called Shista, and it's the wireless valley of Scandinavia, if not the world. Uh, reason for that being is you have uh, companies like Ericsson which do, which have their headquarters here and do a lot of their 4G and 3G um, testing here. So now we're gonna connect. Very simple like that. And in the meantime I'll open up a ping here just to measure the latency of this network from modem to base station and back uh, rather it's out going out to the internet as well I should say so let's see here there we have it it's in its 20s it's low 20s even uh, which is very very low and that's kind of ideal I would say for doing online gaming uh, like first-person shooter games um, these are the perfect kind of latencies to have. Also, if you have uh, things like um, voice over IP and so on, uh, this would be ideal in terms of latency. Now what we can do is measure the speed because that's what people are really after here. And as said, the commercial deployment here in Sweden is still at its early stage and they announced 50 megabits. Uh, though what an operator says and what an operator actually deploys is two different things. Um, or rather not deploy but deliver. Because there's a lot of 
overhead one has to take into account due to radio so in every radio uh, transmission you have some loss but here we have it nearly 5 megabits up and nearly or 17 and a half megabits down we'll do another test just again now a different figure 26 megabits and nearly 5 megabits up there we go. and one more try okay, so it kind of fluctuates but all within the same 5 megabits or so which is pretty good however I do anticipate that the, the, the bandwidth that we're getting here will be a bit higher if one is outdoors outside the um, outside the building because of the, the fact that it is on a 2.6 gigahertz network and also I don't know where the base station is located but if we had better line of sight with it it would probably be a lot better as well However, one has to also take into account that there could be other users who are also hogging the line on the same base station. But this is a really good start to begin with, and I think more will happen once there is further concentration or density of base stations, because that's what it call, all comes down to its capacity. And one of the things that you can do with 4G that you can't do with other technologies is that you can uh, pool in all the bandwidth from from all the nearest base stations uh, into one funnel so that you're actually um, multiplying uh, the bandwidth. Thanks, bye bye.